We're going to record a Torah study, and we're studying Torah today in memory of Reuben Silverman. So, have his neshama in mind on the occasion of his yard site. And today, I'd like to talk about the plague of the plague of darkness. The plague of darkness. Now, it seems so simple. The plague of darkness was it just a uh, was it just you know power outage for a few days? <laughs> was the plague of darkness just a power outage, or was it something that was so much more than that? So there's actually a very deep question here, um, and I, I want to look at the plague of darkness from the perspective of Rashi, from the perspective of Ramban, Nachmanides, from this perspective of Sephorno, from the perspective of the Torah Tamima and also from the perspective of the Lubavitcher Rebbe. So I don't know if we'll have time to get to all of these, but they're all very, they're all very interesting approaches to the plague of darkness. And I'd like you to think about what you think about when we talk about this plague of darkness, because the other plagues, you can really imagine that, how they could really inflict pain. You know, let's say locusts, okay, they're really destroying you. And um, the wild animals, the frogs, you know, these are really inflicting pain upon you. But what is the big deal about not having electricity for a few days? You know, like what's the big deal? Okay, so you so you don't have so you don't have a light for we all have power outages in our life. What is the big deal? I mean, it's not pleasant. It's really annoying, but. You wouldn't list it as the ninth plague leading up to the tenth. So let's go closely and let's see what Rashi says. And we'll look at the verse. We'll look at the commentaries. We'll try to get to the bottom of this. And and when I come to the end of each commentary, if you have a then we'll stop. And if people have questions, we'll address the questions. So the verse says in chapter ten, verse twenty one. Ayomar Hashem al Moshe. God does not give a warning to Pharaoh before this plague. He just says, God says to Moshe, stretch forth your hand up onto the heavens. Let there be darkness on the land. And the darkness will, verse says, become darker. And Moshe stuck forth his hand to the heaven. There was a very, very darkness of gloom in all the land of Egypt for for three days. Nobody could see their brother. Nobody could get up. And nobody could get up from his brother for for three days. And for all the children of Israel, for all the children of Israel, there was light in their dwelling places. That's the plague. That's the plague. Okay, so what's the big deal about that plague? So let's first look at Rashi. Rashi says, let's see Rashi's explanations here. Rashi has a few points that I wanted to focus on. The first thing that Rashi says is, it says, Rashi says, Rashi says to verse 22, she says, shall ofel. It wasn't just darkness. It was a darkness of gloom, a darkness of gloom, meaning to say, not gloomy darkness, but darkness of gloom. It's a noun, meaning to say, the 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 word af, or ofel is not describing the darkness but it was a darkness of gloom. So the darkness represents a almost a spiritual darkness. Now there was an actual physical darkness, but it was a spiritual darkness that entered into the land, that destroyed. Now that's the end of a society is when they're living in a darkness of gloom. You know, um, what was the phrase? I'm not going to remember it, but what was the phrase that Jimmy Carter used about America that was got him into so much trouble it was a pessimistic phrase. I don't remember. I forget it. 
The, you, know, you know, somebody will put it in the text. I'm sure somebody remembers it. When he, when he said that, he messed up. I was oh, like Ronald Reagan when he said it was morning in America. You know, he, he, even if it wasn't true, but he, if you speak like that, you have a chance. But Rashi says this was a darkness of gloom. And then what Rashi says is that there were, since it says the word shlosha yamim three, twice, so Rashi says, what was the nature of this darkness? Shelo ra'u ish es achiv us an shlosha yamim. There was the first period of darkness that a person couldn't see his brother. You couldn't see your brother. Now that's really a physical darkness, but it's also such a spiritual darkness that the world was so dark and nobody could see their brother. Nobody had a vision that they were able to even see their brother. And then it states, and then it states, and then it states that there was another three days. There was another three day period where nobody could, nobody could arise from its place. Meaning to say that there were two that there were two three-day periods. The first three-day period, nobody could see each other. And the second three-day period, nobody could move. A darkness of being stuck in one place. These are both physical and spiritual. A darkness of gloom. Rashi says it was physical. In the previous Rashi, he says that it was, it was darkness, shahayabo mamash. It was a darkness that had substance. It was thick. But we're talking about physical and spiritual, that one is not able to see their brother, and also one is not able to move themselves, to get up and to sit down. So that's the first thing that Rashi is saying, that it's a, a darkness of an inability, an inability to move, an inability to see. And now we understand why this is the penultimate plague, because the plague represents that Egypt was taken over by gloom. You could face any challenge as long as we have a vision and as long as we're optimistic, as long as we believe that there's a future. But now Egypt has no future. And that's why this was the most devastating of the plagues up until this point, because Egypt has no future. And so that's the nature of the plague of darkness, according to Rashi, that Egypt has no future. But there's another element. There's another element, Rashi says, another powerful element. What's the other element? The other element is, Rashi says, why did, why, of all the plagues, and this is the way the Maharal explains Rashi's question, why of all the plagues was the plague of darkness brought in two separate, in two separate uh, stages. The first stage was the first three days where nobody could see their brother and the second three days where nobody could even move. So Rashi says that there's a reason. Why did they bring the darkness upon them? They're among the generation of, of Israel. The Jewish people of that generation had wicked people amongst them, amongst themselves. I know we were not all of us were good, believe it or not. Those people, there were people there who did not want to leave Egypt. And during these three days of gloom, the first three days, they died. Why? So the, the Jewish people died. And so why was there darkness? So that the Egyptians would not see them in their downfall. And they'll say, oh, they're, they're being afflicted just like us. So therefore, for this reason, that was the first three days. And then what was the second three days that the darkness was so thick? That was the Jews who weren't killed off. They went and they went to ask for the vessels of the Egyptians. And so therefore, when it came time to take those vessels, then the Egyptians would say, but we don't have anything when they were leaving Egypt. And they say, no, we saw it in your territory. So, so basically to summarize what Rashi is saying, that Rashi was saying that this plague was a darkness of gloom. It's a noun. 
It was a darkness of a lack of hope in the future, a darkness where nobody could see their brother, a darkness where nobody could move, nobody could get up and nobody could sit down. And also Ben Rashi says that this was a darkness which, which the Jewish people, the Israelites themselves died in. Uh, and at the same time it was a darkness where the Israelites had the ability to see which part of the Egyptian society they wanted to take with them when they left. But what does it mean the, Egypt, the Israelites die during these, during these first three days of the darkness? How many Israelites are we talking about? Well, here we can quantify it exactly because the rabbis, Parshas B'Shalach Rashi tells us at the beginning of the portion that there were four-fifths of the Jewish people did not leave Egypt because they died in the plague of darkness. Chamushim alu b'nei Yisrael me'eretz Mitzrayim. That Rashi says four-fifths died. Four-fifths died because they didn't want to leave Egypt. So they died during the plague of the darkness. Now, when you think about so how many is that? So we're going to say that that must have been around, that must have been around 6 million adults, believe it or not, because there were 600,000 men between the ages of 20 and 60 that left Egypt. So there must have been, let's say, 600,000 women between the ages of 20 and 60 that left Egypt. So four-fifths of that, what's, what's four-fifths of that? So then we're going to say, let's say it was around 3 million uh, men and three million, three million. Uh, it depends how you count the fifth. If you count the six hundred thousand as part of the fifth or not part of the fifth, but either way, it's around you know between five to seven million who died. So it's a horrific number. It's a tremendously large number. The Lubavitcher Rebbe says this is not meant to be. The Lubavitcher Rebbe, the way I understood what the Rebbe is saying, is saying that this is not physical death. But it means a spiritual death. These are the ones who are basically lost to the Jewish people forever because they stayed in Egypt. Anybody who stayed in Egypt became, became not part of the destiny of the Jewish people. They were, they were spiritually cut off from the Jewish people. And so therefore, they, that is what it means. And now when you think about it, it sounds like, wow, all these millions didn't want to leave, didn't want to be part of the exodus and it was 80, um, 80%, but today in America, if we wanted to imagine that the Exodus, that Moses would come down here today to, to lead us out, how many of us would leave? Probably less than 20%. So that's the context of the story. Okay, so this is the commentary of Rashi. And uh, before we go on to Nachmanides, we'll stop here and, and see if anyone has a question.